I created these climate stripes, which have now become an international symbol of climate change concern all over the world. From London Fashion Week to Tesla's and even on BBC News, you may be seeing this graphic around the place quite a bit. The climate stripes are created by Professor Ed Hawkins, who works here at the University of Reading. This is also where I came to study meteorology and climate, so I've come back to university to find out more. Each stripe represents the average temperature every year over the last century or so. Blue for colder years and red for warmer years. And the Eureka moment came at the Hay Festival in 2018. I was looking for a way of very simply communicating the fact that our planet is warming. And so I made a set of stripes for hay uh, and I showed them on the screen in this way. And I could instantly see the members of the audience realise that something was happening and they could instantly visualise uh, the fact that the planet was warming and that was affecting hay itself. And we've made them available for anyone to use and download uh, and communicate this message wherever they live. The temperatures will continue to warm, the colours will get darker and darker and darker uh, until that happens. And it's our choices at COP26 and beyond that will determine how dark the colours get. We've just taken a look at the climate over the past few hundred years. But let's take a journey further back in time, looking at thousands and millions of years ago. Analysing the planet's climate history plays a key part in working out what could happen next when it comes to global warming. Understanding climates of the past, which have obviously been very different to today, is important so that we can understand the Earth system and understand what the implications of current climate change and future climate change are. Humans have lived through extreme variations in climate in the past, and in Wales, for example, we can see evidence of that from glacial valleys that have been scoured out by ice sheets to other evidence on the landscape of as warm or warmer than present temperatures. What you can see over there is where sea level would have been, so that's where the beach would have been. So The evidence of these higher temperatures is clear to see at Fall Bay in Gower. We know that sea level is going up currently and has been for the last century, so we think we might see half a metre or a metre sea level rise by the end of the century depending on our carbon emissions. And most of that currently is due to ocean thermal expansion. But there's potential for ice melt in the future and that will contribute to rising sea levels. And we think that that happened in the past, so that is part of the reason why we see those reef beaches there from the last interglacial, so 125,000 years ago. And in a kind of drastic uh, climate change scenario where we don't reduce our carbon emissions, something like that may well be possible in several hundred years time. And the difference from that past scenario is that climate change is undeniably being caused by us now. Have you been thinking of a new colour scheme for future years in a warmer world? I'm going to need more colours. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with that yet. <laughs>